Adjusting procedures for LK1850 model of high-speed one-needle cylinder bed lock stitch bar tacking machine. Now let's learn the adjusting procedures for the LK1850 model of bar tacking machine. One, lubrication. Observe the oil gauge by looking down from just above it. If red marker line B is observed in the oil gauge, supply oil until red marker line B completely goes out. Use Juki New Defrix Oil No. 2 or Spindle Oil No. 2. If a low viscosity type oil that is used for lock stitch machines is supplied to this machine, the oil may soon run out or oil leakage may result. So be careful. Two, direction of rotation of the sewing machine. Adjust so that the sewing machine rotates in the direction of the arrow shown on the pulley. Three, attaching the needle. Insert the needle fully into the hole in needle bar B with the long groove A facing you. Then tighten the screw. Use standard needle DP5. DP17 is a long needle. Four, thread the machine head in the order as shown on the screen. Thread the thread stand C. Thread guide number one D. Thread guide plate E. Thread tension controller number one F. Thread tension controller number 2G. Thread take up spring H. Thread guide I. Arm thread guide A. Thread take up lever J. Arm thread guide B. Thread guide K. Needle bar thread guide L. Then needle end. If silicone oil M is used, supply silicone oil to the machine from the inlet.
In this case, pass the thread also through thread guide N. Place bobbin P in bobbin case R. Pass the bobbin thread through the hole in the bobbin case and allow the thread to trail about 30 millimeters from the hole. Now set the bobbin case in the sewing machine. Five, adjusting thread tension controller A and thread take up spring B. Five, one, adjusting the length of remaining thread C. After thread trimming, adjust the length of the thread remaining at the needle eyelet to 35 to 40 millimeters. Adjust the length of remaining thread using tension controller number one D. Turning the controller clockwise will decrease the length of remaining thread. Turning the controller counterclockwise will increase it. For a synthetic thread, adjust so that a slightly longer thread remains at the needle eyelet than in the case of a cotton thread. Adjust thread take up spring B so that it extends at its stroke end, approximately 8 mm from the horizontal position of the L-shaped thread guide F. Loosen the screw and adjust the stroke of the thread take-up spring and tighten the screw after adjusting. If the stroke is larger than 8 mm, the length of remaining thread after thread trimming will be reduced and the needle thread is likely to slip out of the needle eyelet at the start of sewing. Turn the knob clockwise to increase the tension of the thread take-up spring. Turn the knob counterclockwise to decrease it. Five, two, adjusting the thread tension. Turn knob G of the thread controller number two clockwise to increase the needle thread tension. and turn it counterclockwise to decrease it. If the thread tension is too high, the bobbin thread will appear on the right side of the material as I. In this case, decrease the thread tension. Six. Changing the size of bar tacking. A is the length of bar tacking. D is the width of bar tacking. 
one, adjusting the bar taking length. To adjust the bar taking length, first loosen nut B. Then move the feed across regulator C away from you to decrease the bar taking length. Move the regulator towards you to increase it. Tighten the nut after adjusting. Six two, adjusting the bar taking width. To adjust the bar taking width, first loosen nut E. Then move feed regulator F to the right to decrease the bar taking width. Move the regulator to the left to increase it. Tighten the nut after adjusting. Seven, adjusting the belt tension. Adjust the tension of belt B on the high speed side and that of belt C on the low speed side uniformly. Each of the belts should slacken by about 10 millimeters when center A of either belt is pressed with a load of about one kilogram. Adjust the tension of belt B on the high speed side by raising or lowering motor D. Adjust the tension of belt C on the low speed side by moving idler pulley E to the right or to the left. Eight, precautions to be taken when turning the sewing machine by hand to perform adjustments. To bring the safety plate into function, make sure where clamp foot A is in the highest position. This prevents the starting pedal from being depressed even if you step on it, preventing the sewing machine from starting. Take the following steps of procedure. First, remove the spring. Lower the work clamp foot by turning the pedal pressure decreasing device B. Turn changeover pulley D while pressing down starting lever C and the sewing machine will start rotating. Nine, adjusting procedure. Adjust the components in the following order. Adjust the height of needle bar B. Position cloth feed cam F. Adjust the position of stop motion hook G. Adjust stop motion timing H. Adjust the changeover pulley pressing plate J.
Finally, adjust starting lever stopper K. Adjusting height A of needle bar. Upper marker line B on the needle bar should meet lower and face C of the lower bushing when the needle bar is in the lowest position of its stroke. First, turn the pulley by hand until the needle bar is brought to the lowest position of its stroke. Now, adjust so that the upper marker line on the needle bar meets the lower end face of the needle bar lower bushing by moving the needle bar up or down. Adjusting the shuttle timing and the driver. Attach driver H, shuttle L, and shuttle race ring K in place. Align lower marker line B on the needle bar with end face C of the lower bushing while the needle bar is ascending from the lowest position of its stroke. Adjust so that the clearance of 0.05 to 0.1 millimeter is provided between the needle and blade point of the shuttle. Loosen screw E in shuttle race and adjust the clearance to the specified value by turning eccentric shaft F. Turn the eccentric shaft clockwise and the clearance between the needle and the shuttle point will be increased. Turn the shaft counterclockwise, the clearance will be decreased. After the adjustment, tighten the screw in the shuttle race. Now, the center of needle should align with blade point G of shuttle and a clearance of zero millimeter should be obtained between driver H and the needle. To adjust, first bring the needle bar to the highest position of its stroke. Fit the driver in shuttle driver shaft J. Install the shuttle in place. Bring the needle bar to the lowest position of its stroke. Raise the needle bar from the lowest position of its stroke until the lower marker line engraved on the needle bar meets the end face of the lower bushing. Then, adjust so that the center of needle meets the shuttle point by moving the driver to the right or to the left. Now, adjust the clearance provided between the needle and the driver, which works as a needle guard, to zero millimeter by moving the driver back or forth. After the adjustment, tighten the screw in the driver. Now, check that the clearance of 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter is provided between the shuttle and the driver. Twelve, installing and adjusting shuttle race spring A. 
Adjust the lateral position of the shuttle race spring to allow the needle to enter the spring at the right to left center of the slot. Adjust the longitudinal position of the shuttle race spring so that the rear end of the needle meets corner A of the spring. To adjust, attach the shuttle race spring in place. Lower the needle. Move the spring to the right and to the left so that the needle has equal clearance on the right hand and left hand sides of the slot in the spring. Adjust the slot in the spring with respect to the longitudinal direction so that corner A meets the rear end of the needle. Now, tighten screws B in the shuttle race spring. Thirteen, adjusting the feed timing. Adjust so that the feed mechanism completes the material feed action at the moment when the tip of needle has lowered to a height of eight to 12 millimeters above the float plate surface. Adjust the feed timing by moving cloth feed cam A. First, loosen camshaft nut C and cam guide pin D. Turn the cloth feed cam clockwise and counterclockwise to find the middle of the rotation of the cam. Now, temporarily tighten the cam guide pin. Turn the pulley in the direction of its rotation until the feed stops. Now, hold the cloth feed cam by hand at that position to prevent the cam from moving. Loosen the guide cam pin. Turn the pulley to bring the needle to a position where the tip of needle is 8 to 12 millimeters above the throat plate surface. Tighten the guide cam pin. Tighten the camshaft nut. Turn the pulley to check that the feed timing is correct. The later the feed mechanism stops with respect to the needle, the better the tension of the finished seam will be. Fourteen, position of the stop motion hook. A clearance of three millimeters should be provided between stop motion latch A and stop motion cam C when the sewing machine runs at a low speed. To adjust, turn the main shaft by hand until stop motion regulating cam roller D reaches low speed section E of the stop motion regulating cam.
Remove the stop motion tension spring at the starting lever tension spring. Remove pedal pressure decreasing device F. Remove thread trimmer spring H. Loosen clamping screw J in the stop motion regulating arm. Push up stop motion regulating arm B. When the stop motion regulating arm B is raised, the stop motion regulating cam will come in contact with the stop motion cam roller. Shifting the stop motion hook to the left, temporarily fix stop motion regulating arm J. Tighten the clamping screw while taking care not to provide a play at the stop motion regulating arm and not to hinder the smooth operation of the arm. Adjust so that a clearance of 3 mm is provided between the stop motion hook and the stop motion cam. Once the clearance is properly adjusted to 3 mm, tighten the screw of stop motion regulating arm J. Attach the thread trimmer spring in place. Attach the stop motion tension spring. Attach the starting lever tension spring in place. Confirm that the clearance of 3 mm is provided between the stop motion hook and the stop motion cam. Fifteen. Adjusting stop motion timing A. Make the sewing machine enter the starting state and turn the pulley by hand. Turn the pulley until last stitch B is reached. Adjust so that stop motion regulating cam roller D comes down from low speed section E 
to stop motion section F of the stop motion regulating cam C when the top surface of the stop motion hook meets the center of the screw number 1H of the stop motion cam. Adjust so that the stop motion regulating cam roller comes down from the low speed section to the stop motion section of the stop motion regulating cam when the top surface of the stop motion hook meets the screw number one on the stop motion cam. To adjust, loosen the three screws in the stop motion regulating cam. Adjust the position of the stop motion regulating cam by moving the cam within the slots for the screws. Pressing hook G with fingers, perform the adjustment by turning the main shaft. Check that the stop motion hook comes down to the center of the screw number one of the stop motion cam. Sixteen. Adjusting changeover pulley pressing plate K. Adjust so that clearances A and B become equal at the time of stop motion. Each of clearances A and B is 0.35 mm wide. Low speed pulley D and high speed pulley E are released at the time of stop motion. Changeover pulley F changes over the sewing speed between the high speed and the low speed by moving towards low speed pulley D or towards high speed pulley E. When the sewing machine changes over between high speed mode and low speed mode, the changeover pulley moves away from the high speed pulley and low speed pulley. As a result, the changeover pulley is now in the released state. In this state, the sewing machine runs by inertia and the changeover pulley comes in contact with the high speed pulley and the low speed pulley. When the sewing machine enters the stop motion state, the changeover pulley that has been in contact with the low speed pulley moves away from the last stitch. The changeover pulley and the low speed pulley are then released and they rotate about once by inertia before the sewing machine enters the stop motion. To adjust, first bring the stop motion hook to the stop motion position. Adjust clearances A and B to the equal value. Press the changeover pulley pressing plate to check clearance A. Pull the pressing plate towards you to check clearance B. Loosen lock nut and loosen the screw. Securely tighten this screw. Gradually tighten the screw and the clearance on the low speed side will be decreased. Loosen the screw and the clearance on the high speed side will be decreased.
adjust to equal clearance on both the sides. If clearance A is large and B is small, the changeover pulley will come in contact with the low speed pulley and the needle will become hot or the changeover timing between the high speed mode and the low speed mode of the needle bar stroke will not be accurate. Also, the machine may run idle or may even stop. The sewing machine may fail to start up until it enters the high speed mode. If clearance A is small and clearance B is large, torque is inefficient for low speed mode or the high speed pulley will get heated because of contact between the changeover pulley and the high speed pulley. So, it is necessary to adjust clearances A and B equally with accuracy. Seventeen, adjusting starting lever stopper A. A clearance of three millimeters should be provided between stop motion hook B and stop motion cam C when pulling the starting lever. Adjust the starting lever stopper using stopper screw D of the starting lever. If the stopper has not been properly adjusted, the sewing machine will enter the high speed mode at the start of sewing. Depress the starting pedal and check that the clearance of 3 mm is obtained between the stop motion hook and the stop motion cam. Adjusting safety plate D. Clearance A of 0.2 to 0.5 mm should be provided between the safety plate and presser bar lifting lever C when the presser bar lifting lever is raised in the stop motion state. Clearance B of 1.5 to 2.5 mm should be provided between the safety plate and the lifting lever when the lifting lever is lowered in the starting state. Now, adjust so that a 0.2 to 0.5 mm lateral clearance is provided between the safety plate and the lifting lever. Adjust so that the 1.5 to 2.5 mm clearance is provided between them when the lifting lever is lowered. Adjust the respective clearances by moving safety plate up or down and to the right or to the left. When the work clamp foot is in the highest position, the safety plate should work to prevent the sewing machine from entering the starting state. When the sewing machine is in the starting state, the safety plate should work to prevent the work clamp foot from going up. Nineteen, position of work clamp foot A. When the needle is engaged in the lengthwise motion, the needle should provide a uniform clearance both at the front end and the back end of its lengthwise motion. Make the adjustment by moving feed bracket C back or forth.
Adjust so that work climb foot A provides uniform clearance C with respect to feed plate B both at the front and the rear of the work clamp foot. Make the adjustment using this screw. 20. Adjusting the height of the work clamp foot. The standard lift of the work clamp foot is 13 mm. The highest lift of the work clamp foot is 17 mm. Adjust the lift of the work clamp foot using screw B in the connection section located at the center of work clamp foot A. Twenty-one. Position of wiper A. When the wiper passes under the needle tip, a clearance of 2.5 mm or more should be provided between the wiper and the needle. Make the adjustment with stop motion hook B pressed against section B of the stop motion cam at the time of stop motion. Adjust the clearance between the wiper and the needle by moving wiper base arm D up or down. Twenty-two. Adjusting tension release bar A. Adjust so that the tension release bar rises four millimeters above the end face of tension release bar bearing B when sewing machine stops and the work clamp foot is in the highest position. Adjust the tension release bar by moving thread tension controller arm C back or forth. 23. Adjusting the lateral position of the work clamp foot. Adjust the lateral position of the work clamp foot so that the needle enters with equal clearance on all sides of the needle slot. Loosen lock nut A in the feed cam roller shaft and adjust the lateral position of the work clamp foot by moving roller shaft B. 24. Thread trimming procedure. When the sewing machine has entered the stop motion state and before the work clamp foot goes up, the needle thread and the bobbin thread are merely caught by the moving knife. This means that the thread trimmer does not trim the threads at this moment. The stop motion regulating cam roller comes down from the low speed section to the stop motion section. The thread trimmer cam arm roller comes in contact with the thread trimmer cam and the moving knife moves forward. 
Top end of the moving knife passes through the needle thread triangle to catch the needle thread and bobbin thread. The moving knife returns from its backward motion end and the sewing machine enters the stop motion state. Before the work climb foot goes up, the moving knife does not trim the threads but merely catches them. When the work clamp foot is going up, the thread trimmer auxiliary cam presses the thread trimmer cam arm and makes the moving knife engage with the counter knife blade to trim the threads. The thread tension controller opens at the time of thread trimming. Twenty-five. Adjusting the thread trimmer auxiliary cam A. When the sewing machine has entered the stop motion state and before the work clamp foot goes up, needle thread B and bobbit thread C are merely caught by moving knife A. This means that the thread trimmer does not trim the threads at this moment. When the work clamp foot is going up, the thread trimmer auxiliary cam actuates. It makes the moving knife blade move until it is engaged with the blade of counter knife D. Now the threads are trimmed. A clearance of 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter needs to be provided between roller E and the top end of the thread trimmer auxiliary cam so that the roller 2 fits in the recess of thread trimmer cam F. To adjust, make the work clamp foot come down by turning pedal pressure decreasing pulley G by hand. Press down the starting lever. Press down the lever further and turn the changeover pulley in this direction. Keep turning the pulley until roller 2 fits in the recess of the thread trimmer cam F. Now, loosen the screws and adjust so that the clearance of 0.3 to 0.5 mm is obtained between roller E and the top end of the thread trimmer auxiliary cam A. If the clearance is extremely larger than the specified value, thread trimming failure will result. If the roller comes in contact with the top end of the thread trimmer auxiliary cam with no clearance between them, the thread trimming action will be interrupted when spreading the thread and the threads cannot be trimmed. Make the sewing machine enter the stop motion state, attach the spring in place, actuate the pedal pressure decreasing device to confirm that the knife actuates. Twenty-six. Positioning of moving knife A and counter knife B. 
Position the moving knife so that hole E in the moving knife meets needle hole guide B before work clamp foot goes up after the sewing machine has entered the stop motion state. Adjust the position of the moving knife by moving the screw in moving knife link C. If the moving knife is too close to the counter knife, the sewing machine may perform thread trimming at the moment of stop motion, or the thread spreader may fail to actuate with consistency, resulting in thread trimming failure. If the moving knife is too far from the counter knife, the moving knife will fail to engage with the counter knife, resulting in thread trimming failure, or the needle will interfere with the moving knife, resulting in needle breakage. Adjust the position of counter knife by moving it until it is spaced 0.5 mm from the needle hole guide. Install counter knife F on the throat plate base. Attach washer G to the moving knife. Attach moving knife link H and moving knife J in place. Tighten the hinge screw and check that the moving knife moves smoothly. 27. Adjusting the height of the moving knife and the counter knife. Adjust the height of moving knife by changing the thickness of the washer so that blade B of the moving knife is engaged with needle hole guide A by the depth of 0.15 mm. Adjust the height of counter knife by bending the counter knife so that blade D of the counter knife is positioned 0.10 to 0.15 mm higher than needle hole guide A. 28. Disassembling and assembling pedal pressure decreasing device. 28. 1. To disassemble the pedal pressure decreasing device, remove starting lever tension spring C and stop motion tension spring B. Actuate pedal pressure decreasing device D and lower the work clamp foot. Remove changeover pulley pressing plate Y and stop motion ball.
Loosen screws E in the bore retainer and remove bore retainer F. Remove low speed pulley installing plate J. Remove low speed pulley K. Remove adjusting shim L. Remove pulley spacer M. Remove screw N in the low speed pulley shaft. Remove taper screw P. Remove low speed pulley shaft O. Remove changeover pulley Q. Remove springs T. Remove high speed pulley C, ring R. Remove spacer W. Remove shims X. Remove high speed pulley Y. Remove two extra thickness springs B. Remove washer C. Remove screws Z in the stop motion cam. Remove stop motion cam A.
28-2, assembling the pedal pressure decreasing devices. Attach stop motion cam to the main shaft. Fit screws number one in the screw hole in the cam through to the hole of the main shaft and secure the stop motion cam by tightening the screw number one. In the next step, pulley spacer A, two extra thickness springs B, high speed pulley C, adjusting shims D, pulley spacer E, and searing F are to be attached in place. Fit the C-ring in this groove. Attach the pulley spacer in place. Attach two extra thickness springs B in place. Attach high speed pulley C in place. Check that the high-speed pulley moves smoothly. Attach adjusting shims D in place. The adjusting shim is as thick as 0.1 mm. Attach pulley spacer E in place. Fit searing F in the groove. Check that the C-ring is securely fitted in the groove. Now, confirm that the clearance of 0.2 mm is provided between the high-speed clutch and the high-speed pulley. Thickness of the shim is 0.1 mm. So, if it is possible to put two shims in the clearance, the clearance is as wide as 0.2 millimeters. 
adjust the clearance by changing the number of adjusting shims to be used. Increasing the number of adjusting shims will narrow the clearance. In the next step, low speed pulley springs G, changeover pulley H and low speed pulley shaft I are to be attached. Put the low speed pulley springs in the corresponding holes. Take care that three springs avoid contact with three screws in the changeover pulley. The springs should touch the pulley only at the points in between every two neighboring screws of the three screws. Attach the low speed pulley shaft to allow the taper spring to fit in the taper hole in the main shaft. At this time, take care not to allow the low speed pulley spring to interfere with the disc and the screw of changeover pulley. In addition, take care not to twist the pulley springs. Now, confirm that the changeover pulley moves smoothly. In the next step, pulley spacer J, adjusting shim K, low speed pulley L, Low speed pulley installing plate M and ball retainer N are to be attached. Attach the pulley spacer in place. Attach the adjusting shim in place. Attach the low speed pulley in place. The overall clearance in the low speed pulley, high speed pulley and changeover pulley is 0.7 millimeter. Adjust the clearance properly by changing the number of adjusting shims to be attached. Increasing the number of adjusting shims O will move the low speed pulley towards you. This means the overall clearance will be widened.
Decreasing the number of the adjusting shims will narrow the clearance. Attach low speed pulley installing plate M in place. Attach ball retainer N in place. Check that the changeover pulley provides a clearance of 0.7 mm. Check that the high speed pulley moves by 0.2 mm. Attach stop motion ball P and change over pulley pressing plate R in place. Put the stop motion tension spring in place. Make the sewing machine enter the stop motion state. Adjust the changeover pulley pressing plate so that a clearance of approximately 0.35 mm is provided in section Q located between the low speed pulley and the changeover pulley and in section Y located between the high speed pulley and the changeover pulley.
This completes the explanation of assembling and adjusting procedure for the high-speed one-needle cylinder bed lock-stitch bar-taking machine.